Hi, everybody. It's Heather, the expat entrepreneur. And here I am with the fourth episode uh, in this mini series uh, for crypto for beginners. And today, what we're going to talk about is crypto security. So it's a really important topic. And um, I'm going to have links below for uh, to take you to an article if you'd rather read about it. Um, but I highly advise that you pay uh, close attention take some notes or grab the check the checklist that I'm going to have available for you if you want to just get that PDF um, and uh, make sure that you employ these measures because they're really, really important. Two things I just want to remind you of quickly before we get started um, is, again, you know by now that I am not a licensed professional in terms of uh, being a lawyer or a tax advisor or an investment advisor. Um, I'm just sharing information that I've learned uh, along the way to try and help make your journey easier. Uh, so so always remember that you do have to do your own research. <clears throat> the second thing I want to make a point about saying is that let's remember the cryptocurrency market is unregulated. It's 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 what's called decentralized, right? So there's no governing body. There's no company that's out there uh, or government that's going to protect you or um, uh, put rules and measures in place, at least not at this point. So you're on your own out there in this wild west that's teeming with crooks um, and people who want to steal from you and people who want to try and uh, lead you astray. And uh, I'm just reminding you of this now. I'll talk about it again further in this video. But just so that you remember, the reason why we're going to all these lengths with keeping our crypto and our identity safe when we're online is because there's a whole bunch of people out there who are trying to find clever ways to uh, infiltrate your holdings and your, your identity or your position online. So it's really important. It's not just like, uh, you know, you're out there doing Google searches on things and you're just having a little fun. This is important stuff. So uh, yeah, on that note, let me roll through it. And I do have a list here in front of me. So if you see me glancing down, that's why I don't want to miss a single thing. Um, and the first thing to start out with is by letting you know that um, it should go without saying, but I'm not going to take anything for granted here. I want to make sure I tell you each and everything I can possibly think of and pretend like you know nothing about security online or anything at all. So the first thing is always make sure that you have a secure internet connection when you're doing anything to do with crypto or your online banking or your other personal stuff that's really, really important and you wouldn't want anybody getting, you know, their passwords or whatever. This means you're not checking your um, logging into your exchanges while you're on vacation in some hotel somewhere or at the airport or, you know, on the free Wi-Fi on the bus or whatever. You're only doing this when you're when you've got a secure connection. And usually for most of us, that's at home. Um, maybe you've got a secure connection at work. I'm not too sure if that would be a smart idea to check in at work and do that kind of thing. You would have to make that call for yourself. But um, yeah, always make sure you're on a secure internet connection when you're doing anything to do here. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is when you're actually onboarding your fiat currency into crypto land, you need to make sure of two things. One, first one is that you've chosen a reputable exchange to bring your money in through, okay? That it's not just some fly-by-night exchange. Um, they're fewer and far between now these days because most businesses see the immense opportunity for them to be a legitimate service provider. And that's where I'm seeing most companies wanting to stay, which is great. But there's still going to be some out there who are going to fly in and try and, you know, wrangle up a whole bunch of deposits and then leave. So always make sure that where, whatever company you're using, whatever exchange you're using is reputable. And that's easy to do, easy to verify online and do searches and, and look at reviews and, and that kind of thing. Um, the other thing is, is when you're actually uh, onboarding your fiat currency to that exchange, um, you need to make sure that you're doing this uh, using their um, proven and safe system. And there, there will be ways as soon as you get yourself a, a cryptocurrency exchange account, which is kind of like a bank account, it's just not with a bank, it's with a cryptocurrency exchange. Um, you as soon as you get that there will be an option in there for different ways that you can bring uh, crypto in uh, or fiat in. And um, this is something that is going to, you know, the, this, the, the longer story is going to go beyond the, the, the scope of this video, but you will have the way 
ways within your exchange to bring your fiat in. So just make sure you use those ways and not something that you found out about arbitrarily in some other place. Um, the next thing is, is that when you're dealing with anything to do with crypto, you, what you want to do is create an encrypted email account for yourself. And this is not a Gmail account. Um, it's not a Hotmail account. It's an encrypted email account that's really hard to hack. And that's the whole point of it. And the best practice for this is get yourself an encrypted email account. And I've got a few suggestions for you in the PDF if you want to grab that crypto security PDF that I've got there, the checklist. Um, but when you get yourself an encrypted email account, use that for absolutely everything to do with crypto and nothing else right? You use that for the uh, email address you use to set up your um, uh, crypto exchange accounts or any service providers or softwares that you might need or anything you do to with regard to crypto. Um, and the reason for that is because that's one critical piece of information. If somebody's trying to, you know, hack you or scam you or get access to your accounts, your login detail, your email address is actually one critical piece of information. We take it for granted out there in the normal world, right? Where you're just putting your email address wherever it needs to go because that's how we're doing business here. Um, but the truth of it is when, you know, you're going to get involved in crypto and do in crypto investing, you're going to want to make sure that you keep everything as safe as you possibly can. So that is something you should definitely do. Uh, another thing is Almost all uh, crypto exchanges will require you to employ some version of two-factor authentication. It's often abbreviated to 2FA. And what that is, uh, it might sound confusing, but it's really simple and it's really good. It's something where you would go to your, let's say your exchange account, you would go to log in, you'd put your username that may or may not be your email address. You would enter your password and click go, and then it would say, enter the the two-factor authentication code, enter the code that's been sent to your device. And you would have something on your phone that would either be like the, the Google version of Google Authenticator or there's another one called Authy. And again, this information is in the PDF. Just grab that. It'll be so much easier. But you set that up and then it's on your phone. And in order for you to get access to your account, you also have to enter that code that comes to you instantly. And it's only good for like 30 seconds and then it refreshes. So it's a really clever way to uh, make it extremely difficult for somebody to actually log into your account, even if they did have your email or, or your log at your um, username or, and your password. There are some very clever hackers out there who have built softwares that encoded that can find a way to pretend that they have the, the device for the two-factor authentication. It's, I'm trying to say it's not absolutely foul-proof and perfect but it's really good. So do that, for sure do that. Another thing you can do is to use a VPN, a virtual private network. And this is something where you get at, you, you, you join, you get yourself an account with a, a good VPN provider and you turn it on. And what that does is it disguises your IP address of your computer. Because right now, all of our computers, whenever we're online, it sends out an IP address into the, into the network, into the, you know, cyberspace um, announcing where you are. Your IP address is tied to your location. And if you use a VPN, it's gonna take that location and it's gonna put it somewhere else. It's gonna pretend you're somewhere different. And it makes it that much more difficult for anybody to actually know where you're at, where what your computer address is. So it's a really good way to um, further protect yourself on many levels. People have been using VPNs for their own personal use uh, for, for, I want to say decades, maybe decade for sure. Um, but it's, it's good practice. It really is. Um, the next thing you need to think about is having really strong password management. Um, and you don't just want to pick your everyday passwords. And this is going to be a little bit of a PIA, a little bit of a pain in the arse, but it's real, again, really, really worth it. Um, you will, uh, find a way, whether you, there's systems and, and pro, uh, service providers out there that will manage your passwords for you if you want to. And you can sign up for one where it will pick the password for you. You will enter it in. It will automatically update it and change it. And it will do all of this for you behind the scenes, which is great. Um, what a lot of people tend to do, that's really not a good idea. Even if you pick a crazy, complicated, interesting, different password that nobody could possibly guess, 
maybe you've got it saved somewhere on your system and you just copy and paste it and put it in every time you want to log in. This is not a good idea. And I will get into a little bit more on that in a minute when I talk more about your passwords and your keys and stuff. But you don't want to have any of that personal information on a device of any kind that can be connected to the internet because it's susceptible to somebody hacking in and getting it. You need to go old school on this and get yourself a pen and paper and literally write it down. All those crazy combinations of upper and lower case and the special characters and all that stuff. And the thing is, most of the time, you really don't need to enter that password very often. Like once you set up your exchange account and you get going, you enter it in. And unless you do something different with your browser, like use a VPN that's going to change where it's at and it's thinking, who's this person who's trying to log in? You need to re-sign in again. You might need to enter it then uh, when that kind of thing happens. But most of the time, we're just logging in um, and uh, using the two-factor authentication to get access. So you really won't need to be like you know, looking and transposing that crazy thing very often. And if you do decide to use a password management type of a system, it'll make it that even that much easier. But definitely have a good strong password. Don't use the same passwords for anything, really, uh, any of the accounts. And um, don't share them with anybody, of course. Yeah. Um, another thing is that you will want to get yourself some good malware. Um, it's not so much antivirus, although you can do that as well, but it's the malware that we need to be more concerned about because that's the kind of code that gets put onto your system and just kind of lurks in the background and, you know, waits for you to enter passwords and make a record of it and send it off to the culprit or, um, that kind of thing or plant, you know, um, seeds in your system somehow and there are really good malware um, providers that will be good for your whatever device whether it's your your phone or your computer or whatever but definitely have something in place and check right uh, on a regular basis and, and do the scan of your system and make sure that you don't have any of that stuff on there um, that's a really easy thing and it's something that we get lazy about i think so do that um, another thing you can do that is a little bit extreme but there are people who do it and i guess it's going to depend on maybe how deep your holdings are and how big of a stake you really end up with there are folks who have a dedicated device to crypto only. That would mean a, you know, a computer that is only, you only do anything to do with crypto on that one device. And then everything else you do when you're out there in the real world, so to speak, and you're doing a search on finding a dentist and, and doing Google searches for, you know, the best, you know, shoes for the summer or whatever the things are you're doing and that you, because you, all those cookies are happening, right? And then eventually somebody's going to, um, you know, put an ad in front of you. Maybe you're going to click it. It just greatly reduces, that was a crazy example, sorry, but it greatly reduces the chance of somebody um, uh, connecting you with crypto. Because as soon as you get known in cyberspace as somebody who's interested in crypto, you're going to start getting all kinds of, you know, ads put in front of you, all kinds of things will be popping up that in, 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 on the sidebar of wherever you are that sell those, that provider sells advertising to, you'll start getting emails uh, from different people about different things to do with crypto because it's all connected out there. And it's just to the point now where, you know, there's nothing we can do and, and being upset about it or, or thinking it's all big brother, it's not, it's just marketing. <laughs> it's just the way that online marketing or e-commerce works these days. And as soon as you are tagged and known to be interested in brown leather boots that come to the knee, you're going to start seeing ads for those things for probably about three weeks until it funnels through its cycle. And they, they, they're whatever length of time the person selling the boots decides it's enough time and we're not going to keep sending it to you anymore. We're going to move on to somebody else. That's how it works. So it'll be the same thing with you with crypto. And that's why if you did decide to use a dedicated device, you're only on that device and, and going to be uh, getting that kind of stuff there, which you're always going to be on high alert every time you're on that device or anytime you're doing anything to do with crypto and you're out there online in cyberspace, you're on high alert. You're triple checking everything. You're not clicking any dodgy links. And here I'm going off onto some other place that I may as well just go there right now in the list because I'm heading there anyway. But you want to make sure that um, you are only clicking on links that you know are genuine, right? And that means if you've got an email from somebody 
and you don't know, maybe it's a trusted source, maybe it's not, but why are they sending an email for a login link for my exchange account with Gemini when they're not even Gemini or even maybe they're pretending to be? You don't click that link, right? You go and as you, as you move through this whole procedure and you start getting accounts set up and you, know, you start looking at certain um, uh, websites for news and information and you're gonna create a folder on your browser that's for crypto and that's all the things that you do in there. You're gonna save and bookmark each page yourself when you know this is a legitimate link and you don't have to worry about um, you know, where, where has this come from? Because there are email scams out there where somebody gets a hold of your email address, right? Because they've linked you to crypto. And now they're sending an email out to you and pretending to be maybe, they're pretending to be one of the companies you deal with and maybe they're pretending to be your exchange or a service provider or um, a tech support person or something like that. That And just hoping to get you to click something or open an attachment and don't ever do that. If you don't know who this is, don't ever get sucked into, you know, clicking or taking that bait because if it's legitimate, especially those, those ones, you know, if you don't respond in, in 24 hours, everything's going to be shut down and you're going to have a big bill and all this crazy stuff that's all, oh, holy smokes, and it freaks you out and you don't ever fall for that because that's not how the world works. That's not how this works. Even if it was the worst thing you can possibly think of, even if it was the IRS coming after you, they're not going to do that, are they? It's not going to happen that way. So why would a little old company <laughs> that you happen to be dealing with behave in that manner? Like, it's just not logical. So you need to really be on high alert, triple check everything, and don't click on anything you don't 100% know and trust. Um, and definitely key, start making that folder with all the bookmarks in there of the places you go. I've got that for so many things. I've been doing that for years because I don't want to even go to Google search and search, log in for my um, uh, website hosting company because somebody else has put a fake address there that looks really close. They've got a bunch of ads going, so they're coming up first and it looks like it's the the legit one and it isn't, right? Like, I mean, that's an extreme example and it'd be really hard to do that because the company who's actually the one who's not showing up would eventually see that and probably get a big complaint out there. But it's just an example of of how, um, you know, you, you've just got to be triple checking everything and be on high alert. I don't know how else I can say that. So let me move into the next level of things, the next column of things. And, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about your actual passwords. Um, and remember I mentioned that you're gonna need to write them down. So there's a few things. And what you're gonna need to do is keep a ledger, basically. Uh, old fashioned handwritten ledger where you're gonna keep track of your passwords. Your thing called seed phrases. You'll keep track of your keys. And you'll, if, you, if there happens to be a pin code, you'll keep track of those there manually with your pen and paper. Some people like to have two copies just in case. Um, if you do keep it like that, you're gonna wanna make sure you put that thing in a waterproof and fireproof envelope or pouch or something like that, because um, you need to keep that thing safe. And these, co these keys, they're, they're crazy long, you know, 30 digit numbers and letters and codes and all that, and you'd never remember it. And if, if, if something happened and you lost that, which is a way people have lost their crypto, you guys, by losing their key. It's like, it's a heartbreaker, isn't it? When you think about it. Um, but yeah, that's actually not the number one, but it's really high up there. One of the big ways that people actually lose their crypto. Um, so you wanna make sure you keep that real safe. There's actually little devices you can buy that um, are, metal and they let you somehow punch the numbers and letters to, that are your password and then you've got this thing that's sort of like a credit card but now it looks like it's got your password on there and it's metal so it can't be burned or destroyed in water and you would keep that really safe somewhere um, which is kind of a cool idea but I don't know whatever system you end up using for me the easiest thing is just actually literally writing it down um, and it works really well. It's just that you can't be lazy about it and copy and paste, especially from some folder on your computer, because if somebody does get in there in your computer with some malware, if you accidentally click on a link in an email or you click on something that came up on, a, on an ad 
that you saw when you were doing a you know thesaurus search for a word and list and all of a sudden all these ads come up but there's certain websites you go to all the time where there's advertising and that's because that website gets a ton of traffic and one of the ways that they monetize the traffic is by selling ad space so anybody and everybody who wants to advertise can try and go and if they're willing to pay the fee on the, one of these high traffic websites they'll get it and this is a place where you don't know where that link is coming from you don't know any any better than i do and many times if i see something and i'm like oh that looks really interesting i'd love to know more about that i'll close that page i'll go to google i'll search whatever the thing is myself and then i'll find and look at the website and make sure that the website looks legit the url and go that way on my own so yeah that's something to keep in mind now Another thing that I want to talk about as far as keeping your crypto safe online is when you get to the point where you've got crypto <laughs> and you're making money because you found some good investment strategies and it's working for you, um, you're going to want to be saving it, right? Just like you would be saving some cash. And there's a couple of ways that you can do that. And um, one of them is online. One of them is offline. And if you want to save your crypto online, it's called a hot storage or a hot wallet and that would be where you would actually deposit you would transfer and deposit your crypto into a wallet which is basically an account at an exchange that um, will sit there and uh, do whatever kind of account it is if, if, if it's going to give you interest or whatever um, if it's online you're probably most certainly going to put it into something where you're going to get something back from it right um, and I talked about that a little bit before in the other video where if you do store crypto in a hot wallet online in a um, a, a, a high interest wallet or a, a, a vault or a savings account um, you usually have the option of uh, getting an interest um, amount of interest back from them for this and maybe you need to have it in there for a period of time or you what usually is the case is as long as it's in there you're, you've got the interest as soon as you want to take it out you take it out and the interest stops um, in most things with crypto there's not like locked in and fees and penalties for getting out early and that kind of thing you're just it's your it's your choice you're you're the one in driving this this machine and in control here um so that's one of the things or sometimes you would put crypto in a um a savings mechanism like a vault or or, or a wallet and you would take a loan against it now if you did that you need to like have that crypto sequestered for that against that loan because it's collateral but um, that's another thing you can do. Um, but when you store your crypto online in a hot wallet, you definitely need to be sure you're doing that with a legit exchange company or a legit vault um, and not something that maybe is brand new. And they've got these great deals because they're trying to get customers. Let them work it out with other people, not with you. Wait till they get known and reputable and reviews and people come and go in droves and they're able to withdraw their money. Another thing you could do as a test is just to put a little bit in and withdraw it back out again just to make sure you can withdraw it. Because one of the biggest problems out there, one of the biggest scams is the fake investment where they're saying, put your money with us. We're going to manage it for you. You don't have to worry about a thing. You can just go on and carry on with your life. And we're going to give you these amazing returns because crypto is such a great market. And what happens then is they feed you the great line of how much money you're making for about a month or two. And then they pull the rug, right? And the next thing you know, you can't get them on the phone or whatever, and you can't uh, uh, withdraw any of your crypto. You can't transfer it. It's gone. It's gone. And, um, I'm just going to go back and reemphasize why is that how how come that's so popular in crypto because it's unregulated so all those crooks are out there spinning the great line for you to try and get you to give them your crypto to let them manage it for you and as soon as you do you're you're almost certainly never going to see it again you're sure as heck not going to see these great returns that they're promising you because who, who, what honest person is out there pretending to be, or, or even being, not pretending, but being an investment person in crypto? Like, it's so far, it's too early for that to really be a thing. 
Um, and I've said before, and I'll say again, in my humble opinion, if you were a person who would prefer to hand your money over to somebody else to manage and invest for you, then at this point, crypto is not the place for you. And you should go back to the brick and mortar world and give it to a financial planner or a fund manager or somebody um, who, and you're going to get raked with fees and ones you know and ones you don't know, and you're going to pay the huge income tax um, based on whatever kind of income that thing is providing, but you will at least still probably have your investment. And I only say probably because look at how many banks went under in after the 2008 crisis. You know, we all forget that and you tend to think, oh, well, my, if my money's in a bank, it's safe. If my money's in Morgan Stanley, I'm okay. If I got it with Lehman Brothers, I'm okay. Are you? <laughs> like, you know, um, and if you put it in a stock or you put it in a mutual fund, you know, there's a false sense of security there. And uh, so, yeah, um, we've gone off a little bit on a, on a tangent there. But um, the second way that I was talking about that you can save money once you crypto, once you've made that crypto, the first one was in a hot wallet online with a reputable um, holder, and which is usually an exchange, right? Um, and this, if you do it offline, you that's called a cold wallet storage. And that is something where you would actually purchase a device that they're bigger these days. They're not tiny like a thumb drive. Um, used to be, but they're a little bit bigger and it's, an, it's like a thumb drive, thumb drive and it actually will hold, you will transfer your crypto to the address in that device and it will be in that device. So the point of it and why it's some really um, strict, strictly rule-based people say this is the only safe way to hold crypto and they're not wrong because this device has your crypto in it and it is uh, not connected to the internet. And that's why it's safe. The only risk you have is if you lose that device or if it gets stolen from you, because it's literally in that device. It's like having a wallet in your back pocket or in your purse, and that's where your money is. And if somebody steals that from you or you lose it, it's gone, right? Um, whereas with, with it in online, in, in, the, in the network, it's exposed to potential hacks, um, and uh, from anybody, whether it's going to be potentially a hack on the actual exchange itself or on you and your wallet and you somebody finding a way to cleverly get you to transfer the crypto to them. And believe me, it sounds like who would do that? Who would send their crypto to somebody crazy's wallet and just do that? And people do it all the time because they're so convincing out there, you guys. They're so convincing. They spin these stories and I, for the people who come in to uh, my world and, and are looking for information on crypto who have already been in the space and are not brand new to it, I don't know anybody who hasn't been scammed because there are people who blazed the trail up till now and went through all these scams for us so that we know better. We've, we've been tipped off. We're, you know, you're, you're, you're like the deer in the field who's having that nice little morning uh, feed and, and all of a sudden you hear that rustling and you're tipped off because the predator was was too uh, noisy and, and you don't have the element of surprise anymore. That's you and me now. They don't have the element of surprise anymore. We're knowing and, and on the alert and looking for all these scams as it is right now. So um, yeah, if those are the two ways that you would be storing your crypto. And now there's a difference, right? Because if you're storing it, you're probably not really using it. Um, uh, with the exception of if it's in a hot wallet and you've got it in a vault that's paying you interest, then you're able to use it. But if it's in a cold wallet, it, you're, it's literally just sitting there like a, a wad of cash under your mattress. It's literally just sitting there doing nothing, which isn't the best way. <laughs> There's other better ways. So, but anyway, that's kind of how that goes. Now, I'm just going to scan my list here and, and talk now because I'm, I'm going into the part where I want to focus heavy on the scams. And I've talked a lot about links. Don't be clicking them. Be careful about who you give your crypto email address out to. Um, try not to make yourself a, too big of a footprint out there about somebody who's interested in crypto. Keep things quiet. Um, you definitely want to be careful when you're on social media. Like, you know, that's another place where these crooks and these people, they're just, they live there, 
right? Because where, where would you go? Think of it that way. If you're trying to think about, well, if you were, you know, trying to deceive and, and be a criminal and, and, and steal somebody's money, where would you go? And where are the people? Um, and that's where they are. They're, they're congregating online in these social media um, places to talk about things and to, and hey, did you hear about this? And how does this work? And what about that? And that's totally cool. I know you want to talk. I mean, I, I know I've got questions too. And it's like, who, and you want to talk to people who are in the same thing as you, who are doing the same thing and, and, and see um, what they think. And that's where these guys are too. So, you know, if you're looking at trying to get into a, a discord group or a telegraph group, especially, or, or um, the uh, comment section underneath of the YouTube videos, uh, there's a lot of people there who the, they, uh, they found this crafty way of putting their telegraph handle in their name so that they can leave this great comment that has nothing to do with, you know, phishing. But meanwhile, if somebody wanted to find out more, they could, they could go and find this person on the other channel. Um, be highly suspicious of those kind of things. Um, and and the, the ones who are in those groups and uh, um, a lot of times they're trying to pull off the, the scams that we know about outside of that area in that group, like pretending to be a, a support person for one of the services that you might have. Like maybe they're trying to pretend to be a support person for the exchange you have an account at that you have some problem you're not getting anywhere with and they're going to help you figure out this solution and here go ahead and, and click this link it'll take you right to the page you need to go on the uh, uh, exchange uh, website and just enter your information because these days everybody knows don't give out your email or don't give out your password and don't share this so everybody knows they're not going to do that so this is how those those crooks have figured out how to get the information from you anyway they create a fake website find a way to send you there by pretending to be the support or the 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 answer to your prayers the biggest problem you've got right now they're the one who can fix it for you just go here it's the it's your provider anyway which it isn't you enter your information and boom they've got it and like within minutes they've got your account empty because they would then have your login and your password don't ask me about how getting around the two-factor authentication maybe some people don't have that set up um, but they're able to, you know, make a transfer of your crypto to their wallet and it's gone, you guys. Well, that's the biggest thing when I'm saying about triple checking too, especially when you're transferring crypto to yourself or to somebody else or whatever, always triple check your address, your wallet address, and don't like save that address and just use that every time. Go get the new address every time. It's going to be the same one, but once in a blue moon, there's a digit that changes just because it's cyberspace and, and I don't know why, but it does. Um, get the, For the time it's worth, how often are you doing a transfer anyways? Probably not that often. So get your new wallet address every time and um, enter it in there every time and triple check, go back and make sure. And, and I do that by looking at the first, you know, three, four numbers on the beginning of it and the last three, four numbers on the end of it. And I just double check and make sure, and that's good. Um, but, uh, yeah, you don't want to be, uh, hanging out in those social media groups and giving out too much personal information, uh, letting people know you have positions in certain like coins or exchanges or anything like that. Like you want to keep as much information to yourself as you can, because you just, you do not know who's on the other end. And, um, this is easy money for these crooks. You know, all they're doing is they're sitting back there. Like, have you ever got that email about the Nigerian prince who just has died and now they got a, the account's frozen, but they need some Westerner or somebody to come to the rescue and help out and you can receive all the money and then you just pay us a little bit, like that whole thing. How far-fetched is that, right? But people fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. And there's stuff like that going on now in with crypto in this space, whatever place you're going to, whether it's in your in inbox and in your email or the social media groups or whatever. So yeah, be on alert for that. Um, fake websites, email scams, fake apps is another one. Maybe there's an app that somebody says, you know, hey, try this app out. You're wondering about how to do, how to calculate your profits or how to, you know, pick which coin to do or whatever crazy thing this is this great new app, do that. Unless you can verify it with a trusted source, or unless you can see that they've got a lot of great reviews and it's a highly rated product, don't even touch it. Because why take the risk? 
why take the risk, right? Um, I talked a lot about the tech support potential scam and the investment scam, which is, um, yeah, that's that's a huge one uh, because they're actually not even pretending to be somebody different than they are. They're saying, look, I'm the expert. I'm the one I can, I know, here's some history, here's some stats for you, here's my results, how good I've done in the past for investing for other people. I know you probably, maybe you don't have a ton of money, just pull a little bit. To, you can put a grand in, you can put five grand in, like maybe even in the beginning, they're not even asking for that much money. And it's just like, oh yeah, whatever, I can do that. Um, and they're going to pool it and invest it all and then give you your percentage of the of the returns. And it just very rarely works out in crypto because of this unregulated aspect, right? Um, and uh, so many times people are uh, not able to withdraw their funds. So maybe they're getting the reports back saying, yeah, we've done it again. We've just done great and you've made this much and this is your percentage, but you can't take the money out. Um, they're just not letting you. So um, don't go with those. It, like I say, if you if you want to learn how to uh, manage your own money in the cryptocurrency market, you can. And it's not hard. And, 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 and in the last video, we talked about the grid bot trading, which is an excellent alternative, an excellent thing. And the training that exists for that is world class. It's easy to take. It doesn't take a lot of time. It doesn't cost a lot of money. And it's something that if you wanted to do that system for yourself, that strategy, it doesn't take time to monitor after the fact either. Once you put your money in and you create what you want to create, you go on your merry little way. And my point is about that. You can do it yourself. You don't need to hand your money over to the third party and put yourself at risk um, because I have not met anybody yet who did that, who put their money and pooled it into some kind of a crypto investment scheme, who actually got their money back, any of it, like really. So when we can throw a stone in a crowd and, and, and hit of a, several people who have uh, been scammed in crypto, that's almost always the way that it happened. They got conned into an investment scheme of some sort that was never going to pay out. So yeah. Um, the last thing on my list that I, well, it's actually not the last thing it's close to it though, uh, is, uh, when, is a, is a, is a wallet address when you are transferring crypto to yourself or to somebody else. And there may come a time where you've got a legitimate reason and you need to transfer crypto to somebody else for some reason or payment for something or who knows what you need to make sure that the place that you're putting your crypto, the, the wallet address that you're transferring to is legit. Because this is another scam, right? They find a way to get you to transfer crypto. And maybe it's not even a lot. I've had people ask me for 50, like such a small amount, the equivalent of 50 US dollars or 100 US dollars worth of something. And you think, oh, well, what's the risk there? Well, you know, it's just as much as if there were a couple of zeros behind that because you're not going to see it again. Um, so whenever you are sending crypto somewhere to a wallet address, make sure that wallet address is legit and that the person you're sending it to is legit, right? Like not just willy nilly somebody out there. Um, and yeah, the last couple things, again, triple check everything. And I can't say that enough. I kind of alluded to this, but don't brag. When you get to the point you're making some money, you know, or making some crypto, making bank, you know, as hard as it might be not to, uh, you know, talk about and try and let how great you've done and how, what a good, system you've got going don't do it because you're just putting a spotlight on yourself whether it's in the crypto world like online in cyberspace or whether it's in the real brick and mortar world there's been i've learned plenty of stories of people who got held up and by by crooks who knew they had uh, sizable crypto holdings and they held them whatever point i don't know to get the guy to transfer the crypto to them I mean, okay, it's not your wallet coming out of your back pocket. This is going to take a little bit more time to do, but it's happening out there, you guys. So think about that when you're, you know, about to brag about how well you've done or even a position that you've got in, that you're actually in it because um, you just don't know who's listening, right? Um, and the last thing that I wanted to mention about this and a, a final way that you can keep your crypto safe is actually put it in your will. And have that will, have your, um, have your account identified, your accounts at your exchanges, your passwords, your 
uh, your keys, your all the information somebody would need to log on. Because if you pass away and you don't have this available to your heirs, your crypto is just going to, it's not going to die, but it's not going to do anything. It's not going to just going to sit there. Nobody will ever have it because it's not like you can uncover this buried chest of gold bullion in the basement. If your crypto is out there in a hot wallet online somewhere, if it's a cold wallet, maybe somebody would be lucky enough to find the, the, the device and they could actually do something. But if it's in a hot wallet out there, it'll never see the light of day. And anyway, wouldn't you want your heirs to have access to it if, if, if you passed away? So um, and eventually that's going to be what happens, isn't it? So let's be real about it. Um, if you've got you should have it identified and earmarked just as like you do with your other holdings. Um, and there are people who even have gone so far as to um, segregate and put, you know, amounts in different wallets and will the, and one to a different person and that kind of thing. So, I mean, you could, you could go to whatever lengths you want, but that pretty much wraps it up for the crypto security. And I want to remind you that there's a link below for you to go ahead and get the PDF checklist um, where these points are identified and you can actually um, just print that out and have it handy so that you don't have to try and remember any of this or keep it in your computer. It's certainly you're able to do that. Um, and yeah, so I hope this has been helpful to you. And I hope really that you implement some of these measures that are so, so important and will go miles and miles to keeping you and your crypto safe and in your possession, not somebody else's. So on that note, let me say, we're going to be coming in for the home run here. Um, and we're going to do the last uh, of the five part series that's coming right around the corner here and what it's going to be about you're not going to want to miss this one because it's it's the actual q a it's the questions you don't even know to ask yet the answers to those questions so we're going to go through them all and uh, it's just going to give you another further um huge amount of information that will equip you to make better choices and stay safer when you decide to actually get real money into the crypto world so don't miss that if you haven't liked liked and subscribed, like the video and subscribe to the channel yet, please do. Um, and YouTube will automatically notify you when there are any videos that come out, whether it's in this series or the other videos that I do to do with crypto. Um, you won't want to miss a thing. So on that note, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you again um, whenever that video comes. Thanks everybody.